Hey, this is with Joe Wagner and me. Church of Jazz and Justice. Welcome all to join us to celebrate the miracles that life has brought to us. We'll all be doing this together. Pass over stormy weather. Living God beside us on this wonderful 
building. We don't need a church to do God's work. Reverend Marjorie will guide us. We'll all pray together and sing some sweet song. Oh, I could write a sonnet all gratitude upon it. Even though that is here, there's no Easter Oh my goodness gracious, David Sturdivant, you are a genius! <laughs> Thank you and bless you, dear David, for leading us into Easter worship with such um with such easter spirit show, showing all of us how how we put it down at the jazz and justice church god bless you david good morning everyone good morning happy easter to all of you blessings to you on this resurrection sunday on this resurrection sunday when we remember how the tomb could not hold back god's love and how Jesus rose from the grave. And that is what we celebrate on this day, even in the midst of pandemic. That is what we celebrate. So, so dear ones, um, thank you for joining in this time of worship. Thank you all for your amazing courage and graciousness in adapting to these new ways of worshiping. What a joy it is to see all of you, even to see you on the screen, and how my heart yearns for the day when we can all see each other in person and give each other those, those hugs <laughs> that we've been holding on to. So as we enter this time of worship, I just want to gently remind all of us of some of the lessons we've been learning these recent weeks about Zoom etiquette. We are all muted now, and that's how we're going to keep it. Unless you're speaking or singing, stay on mute, and that way we can all hear a bit better. And we're going to try to remain in our seats, amen, as if we were at, at church, right? If we were at church, we wouldn't be moving all around unless it was the passing of the peace, and then we'd really be moving around. But anyhow, so we'll try to remain seated as best we can. So having been blessed with that beautiful music to lead us into worship, seeing all of you, your beautiful faces, some of you with your Easter bonnets on, let us continue now in this time of worship. And our dear sister Cynthia is going to bring the first scripture reading. From the Gospel of Luke chapter 24 verses 1 through 6. On the first day of the week, at the first sign of dawn, the women came to the tomb bringing the spices they had prepared. They found the stone rolled back from the tomb, but when they entered the tomb they didn't find the body of Jesus. While they were still at a loss over what to think of this, two figures in dazzling garments stood beside them. Terrified, the women bowed to the ground. The two said to them, why do you search for the living one among the dead? Jesus is not here. Christ has risen. When I say Christ is risen, I invite you to respond, Alleluia, he is risen indeed. Christ is risen. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Hallelujah. Risen indeed. Christ is risen. Hallelujah. Indeed. He is risen
Dave Mayotki, dear brother, will you lead us in singing Christ the Lord is risen today? Christ the Lord is risen today, Alleluia. Mortal tongues and angels say, Alleluia. Raise your joys and triumphs high, Alleluia. Sing glad heaven and earth reply, Alleluia. Let the victors people sing, Alleluia. Where, O oh death, is now your sting, Alleluia. Dying once, Christ lives to save, Alleluia. Where your victory, O oh brave, Alleluia. So we now where Christ has led, Alleluia. For we are exalted head, Alleluia. Made like Christ, like Christ we rise, Alleluia. Ours the cross, the grave, the skies, Alleluia. I invite you now to join me in the opening prayer. We'll read together, but you don't need to unmute yourself. <laughs> Living God, you call us from our tombs of weariness and beckon us to new life, saying, rise up. You call us from our tombs of despair and beckon us to new hope, saying, rise up. You call us from our tombs of powerlessness and beckon us to action and agency, saying, rise up. When we forget who you are, remind us, O oh God, you are the one who brings life out of death, makes possible what we deem impossible, rolls away the stone and empties out the tomb. When we forget who we are, remind us, O oh God, we are your Easter people, ready to follow in the way of your risen son ready to answer your call and rise up. In the name and spirit of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor Rachel. Thank you, Dave. Dear ones, it is time to pass the peace. And so for a moment, close your eyes and imagine all of us in the sanctuary, passing the peace that we do when we're all together in person. Remember how it goes on and on, the hugs and the handshakes, and holding that in your heart, that image. I invite you to join now in our welcome statement, the words that we say every Sunday, they're in your bulletin, but no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. Amen. We are all welcome here. And so I invite you to, to take your hands and lay them on yourself, on your heart, and begin by passing the peace to yourself. Say, peace be with me. And then I invite you to extend your hands to everyone else out there and say, peace be with you. 
And if you want to take a moment and scroll through and just see who is on today, take a moment and scroll through, wave at everybody. Oh my gosh, happy Easter. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Happy Easter to you all. I see friends joining us from all over the country. <laughs> Happy Easter, beautiful ones. Good morning, good morning. Amen, amen. May God's peace surround and cover and enfold all of us on this day. And now, Shell, will you, will you bless us with a song? Is it All right, here I am. Oh, there you are, Shell. Here I am. The angels bow down at the thought of you. The darkness gives way to the light for you. The price that you pay gives us life brand new. Hosanna forever, we worship you. Hosanna forever, we worship you. The angels bow down at the thought of you. The darkness gives way to the light for you. The price that you pay gives us life brand new. Hosanna forever. We worship you, Hosanna forever. We worship you. And now we talk, come to our time of community prayer. And as we come into this time, let us begin by sensing, despite our distance, our heart connection to each other and to the spirit of life. As we breathe together in time with the heartbeat of God. O oh, Holy One, in the creation story at the beginning of our sacred writings, it is said that the first divine words were, let there be light. Today we celebrate your inexplicable call, let there be life into the midst of Jesus's rejection isolation, suffering and death you called, let there be life. During this time of pandemic, isolation, suffering and death, we need your resurrection call to life more than ever. We hold in your divine light those who are special, the ill or dying, and those living in fear, despair, and loneliness. And we affirm together, let there be life. We hold in your divine light all the vulnerable frontline workers in grocery stores, hospitals, care homes, transportation systems, and workers on our streets. And we affirm together, let there be life. We hold in your divine light all those who have no shelter in which to be safe, and those who are forced into institutions that serve as confinement, but not shelter. And we affirm together, 
let there be life. We hold in your divine light those losing their jobs, facing financial ruin, and all those who already had little or no financial support. And we affirm together, let there be life. We hold in your divine light our beloved ones, and any specific concerns on our minds and hearts that we speak now in the quiet of our homes. And we affirm together, let there be life. O oh, Holy Presence, help us trust your resurrection power in all these situations, places, and people. Empower us to be vital participants in your life-calling, life-giving holy work. May the current tombs of our homes become sanctuaries of hope as we open ourselves more fully to your life and love. Make our communities and neighborhoods sources of connection and solidarity during this time. We thank you for our blessings beyond measure, even in the midst of this pandemic. And we thank you for manifesting your love most profoundly in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. Help us to trust that even now, new life can be called forth by you, as happened with Jesus, as together we pray, our creator God, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Ooh. We worship you, O oh Lord, because of who you are, I give you glory. Because of who you are, I give you praise. Because of who you are, I will lift my voice and say, Lord, I worship you because of who you are. Lord, I worship you because of who you are because of who you are i give you all the glory because of who you are i give you praise because of who you are I will lift my voice and say, Lord, I worship you because of who you are. Lord, I worship you because of who you are. Lord, I worship you because of who 
you are. Amen. Thank you, Terry. Dave Mayotki, the Cantor's Peace. Open up your ears, all faithful people. Open up your ears, hear God's word, open up your hearts, oh, a royal priesthood, beloved God, sweet beloved God, beloved God. Beloved God has come to you. This is a story of the resurrection as told in the gospel according to Matthew. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to the tomb to see it. And suddenly there was a great earthquake for an angel of the Lord descending from heaven came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing dazzling bright. For him, for fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He's not here, for he has been risen as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, he has been raised from the dead, and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. This is my message for you, the angel says. And then the scripture continues, and hear now these additional words. So the women left the tomb quickly, with fear and with great joy, and ran to tell the disciples. But suddenly, Jesus himself met them and said, Greetings. And they came to him and took hold of his feet and worshiped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell the others to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. And here ends the reading. So, twice in this scripture, first from the angel and then from Jesus himself, we hear, do not be afraid. The tomb is empty. Go to Galilee. And dear ones, I have to admit, I read those words and I got a little bit snarky with Jesus. And I said out loud, what do you mean, don't be afraid? In case you hadn't noticed, Jesus, we're in the middle of a pandemic. And yeah, the tomb is empty and you have risen, but right here, right now in America and all around the world, the morgues are full and in some places getting fuller by the day. And so how in heaven's name are we supposed to celebrate Easter in the midst of all this? And furthermore, what do you mean, go to Galilee? 
Why send your disciples back to Galilee? What's left in Galilee? Oh, <laughs> but Galilee, you see, Galilee is where it all started. Galilee is where it all began. Galilee was home. It was by the Sea of Galilee that Jesus called the first disciples, Peter and Andrew and James and John. Galilee is where the ministry began. Jesus is sending them back to the beginning. Jesus is sending us back to the beginning. Jesus is inviting us to begin anew. It is worth noting that the word Easter contains the word east. East is the direction of the rising sun, the beginning of the new day. Jesus is inviting us to begin anew. In another version of the resurrection story, the version from the Gospel of John, Mary Magdalene is leaning into the empty tomb, weeping and wondering where Jesus is. And then from behind her, Jesus, the risen Christ, speaks her name. He says, Mary. And she has to turn around and face him, which means she has to put the tomb at her back and face not the old Jesus, not the crucified Jesus in the tomb, but the risen Christ. Jesus is inviting us to begin anew. In this time of pandemic, in this anxious, frightening time, we are finding new ways to do things, new ways of meeting and gathering, new ways even to house the homeless, to care for the unsheltered, new ways to help small businesses, new ways. And in the midst of all our sorrow and anxiety, we are being shown some new things. How the air is cleaner because there are fewer cars on the road, how the neighbors are friendlier because folks are realizing we're all in this together. Jesus is inviting us to begin anew. The resurrection story is a testimony to how God is always beginning anew. New seasons, new days, new opportunities, new beginnings. I've said it before and I'll say it again. God doesn't say in scripture, behold, I'm about to do the same old thing. No, God says, behold, I'm about to do a new thing, a brand new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? So I was, I was getting a little snarky and irritable with Jesus because, and I know this sounds absurd, you all, but I'll cop to it. I wanted Jesus to come and cheer me up this Easter Sunday. I wanted Jesus to come and cheer us up. But you know, Jesus wasn't born. He wasn't sent, and he surely wasn't raised from the dead to cheer us up. If you want cheering up, call the Easter Bunny. Jesus was born. Jesus was sent. Jesus was raised from the dead to change our hearts. Not to cheer us, but to change us. So may we, on this Easter Sunday and in the days to come, be attentive to the ways that we are being changed, the ways that our hearts are being changed. May we, in this time of pandemic, be attentive to the ways we are being changed, the ways that our hearts are being changed. Begin in us, O oh God, a new day, a new thing, a new day, a new thing, a new day. In the name of Jesus, the risen and resurrected one, we pray. Amen.
Lady Bianca. Can you hear me? You know. In your heart, you know Jesus is alive. Well, oh, my Jesus is alive. Nice he sits on a throne and he see what's going on. Oh, 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 Jesus is alive. So just tell them the name, everybody you see, Jesus, Jesus is alive and Good morning, Plymouth Church. This morning, as we invite the offering, we don't have ushers to pass the collection. Let me start over. <laughs> um, I was so busy looking at Lady B and how beautiful she looked. <laughs> Uh, this morning, as we invite the offering, we don't have ushers to pass the collection plate across Zoom. So instead, I would invite you to place your hand on your heart and to hear my message to you. That Plymouth Church is not a building, a physical location where we sit, I'll admit, an hour and a half every day on Sunday. <laughs> that our building is too small of a place to fit the life and the love that this church produces, and that Plymouth has always been a diverse and beloved community gathered together in the greater Oakland community and now in the greater U.S., um, doing justice work with love and compassion, that we are the living and breathing sanctuaries whose uh, house of God um, who house uh, God's love and healing and compassion 
and that even though we are physically apart, Plymouth Church is doing what a church is supposed to be doing, praying for each other, checking in on each other, sharing our financial resources as we are able to during, this, during these uncertain times so that we can pay Pastor Marjorie, our musicians, aren't they amazing? Uh, our office administrator who makes sure that all of this uh, is taken care of, um, all the behind the scene work that happens, our child care providers um, who are a part of our church family. I am so ever grateful to Pastor Marjorie who has so graciously embraced all learning all this new technology so that we can continue uh, helping us uh, be connected spiritually. So until we can be together again in our church building, let us continue to support Plymouth Church financially by sending our checks by snail mail to the church's office. I'm doing that uh, tomorrow with the post office. Donating online on our website, and you can access uh, the, the link um, on Google, or downloading the Give app on your phone where you can uh, sign up to give a one-time uh, donation or a recurring donation via a bank, a bank transfer uh, or with your debit or your credit card. And um, my last request to you is if you're in a position uh, to uh, increase your giving, um, it, we would urge you to do that uh, to, suppose, to support those of our members who and friends uh, who have been laid off so that the church can help them in their time of need. And with a heart full of gratitude for the many ways you support this church, um, thank you so very much. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Estella. Thank you, Lady B. David, are you going to lead us in our blessing song? No? Yeah. No, no, no. May the blessings of God rest upon you. May God's peace abide with me. May God's presence illuminate your heart. Now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you, David and Yofi. Dear ones, before we benedict and transition to our coffee hour, which <laughs> we'll hear more about in a bit, I want, to, I want to thank all of you for being part of this Easter service. And I want to extend special thanks to our worship leaders and musicians and our Zoom team. So Please join me in your heart from wherever you are in thanking our liturgists and worship leaders, Cynthia Ovando, our worship chair, Reverend Rachel Costco Warfield, our beloved associate pastor, our dear pastor emerita, Reverend Lois Mueller, and our dear Shell who read scripture today. Join me in thanking our musicians, David Sturdivant, our music director, Michelle Jacques, our choir director, Dave Mayaki, our pianist and accordionist and cantor, <laughs> our dear Terry Odabi, our dear Lady B, and Joe Warner, who was with us in spirit via that amazing opening song. Join me in thanking our Zoom team, uh, Hillary Carey, happy birthday to you, and Jisun Song and Paul Bolduke, and we also want to thank our dear Laura Easley, who has been arranging a separate Zoom session for the children on these Sundays so that they have a way to connect and hang out with each other. So, um, so 
as we are, before we Benedict, I also want to say two more quick things. Um, I wish Hillary a happy birthday from all of us. Can we also join in wishing David and Yofi a happy 20th anniversary? <laughs> We did not do our birthday blessing today, but we're going to do our birthday blessing next Sunday, if that's okay. Amen. And um, in just a moment, Hillary is going to give us some instructions for going into our breakout groups, our sort of virtual coffee hour during this time, everyone. But first, first, I invite you to repeat after me these words of benediction. Raise your hands and say, rise up. <laughs> Uh-oh, Marjorie, we lost you for a pause. Okay. Jesus is alive and well. <laughs> Amen. May God bless you all. Happy Resurrection Sunday. I love you all. God bless and keep you. Hillary, will you give us directions for going into our breakout group?